We are live now. Maybe. Not on Facebook, at least. It's just whatever. What are you going to do? Move but, on. Yeah. Nah. Episode number <laughs> 16? 17? Yeah. yeah. 16. We're getting up there. We yeah. were laughing before this because our YouTube <laughs> thumbnail <laughs> is not working, so we have to actually have no thumbnail. <laughs> so that is yeah, that was a good laugh. Yeah, shots are a lot better. Yeah. So I'll start it off. And the first, this is the Real Estate News weekly wrap-up, and the first one I'm going to start with is from the New York Times, and it has everything to do with Americans going to Europe to find cheaper homes or homes or a lifestyle that they've always wanted. And it's funny, too, because obviously because of COVID-19, people went elsewhere, and then they sort of came back, but a lot of people, ironically enough, post-COVID-19, have moved. I know a lot of people, they went to the UK. I know some people that uh, went to Europe as well. And some people that went to say the islands or even Central America. Mexico is very, very hot right now. And what, they're, what they said in the article is that Americans wanted the lifestyle, but not pay all the money. So they're essentially making the same amount of money with a better lifestyle. Hmm. Um, I don't know how many people you know that have moved overseas, but um, London, uh, this one client that I was talking to, she was saying it's worse than New York. So if there is one place to not no. go is London, because she said it's way too expensive. There's no inventory. And, you know, I, I, you know, I don't know the, the real estate market out there, but it was very interesting. She goes, I, we have to live outside of London, which is, I guess, the suburbs of New York City, you know, comparatively. Yeah. Well, in London, it's actually interesting because I went to London. I had a blast. But I think that... What year was this? Last year. Oh, okay. The... Uh, that's a different blast than 10 years ago. It's better as a vacation, I guess. Yeah. You know, whenever I take a vacation, I was like, I could live here. <laughs> um, the property taxes on a, a place purchased in London is only paid once. Oh, wow. So that's why there's very low inventory. Yeah. Um, you know, people pay it one time and then they sit on the property forever. Um, so, so that's not good for turnover. That's yeah, kind of exactly. like, I think California has something similar that you lock in the taxes you lock in the tax rate. That was that was the whole thing with the uh, the Playboy Mansion. Is that the, the taxes were from the 1950s? They're huh. still paying that tax wow. amount. That's uh, yeah, where you're going to get the low inventory. But then at the same time, you're like, God bless the grandfather who bought yeah. London. Yeah, you know, and has just been passing that on and on and on. Yeah. So um, interesting that you know I see some of the things that they have there, like Lisbon and Barcelona. It's they want that lifestyle where they don't have to work. Where yeah. They can take a siesta. Yeah. So. It's, it's very interesting, to be <laughs> honest. It's, you know, I also saw another article, and the comments on it were obviously completely against it. JP Morgan forcing all managing directors back to the office five days a week. And it's, I use the word forcing, but that's what it was always like. And these are managing directors. And the comments were thinking that everyone is going back to the, no, no. These are the people who are making a lot of money. You know, their bonuses are probably, you know, upwards of a million with a, you know, starting salary of 500,000. So, you know, the, the, there was a lot of comments too. There's almost probably 20,000 comments, you know, on it. You know, people are like, oh, the company and everything forcing me. I'm like, if you're making $1.5 million, you know, you're, you're probably getting a car to drive you to the city, you know, if you're outside the city. But anyway, on to your articles. Uh, well, I'll switch over to this one. Where is it hardest to find a home? Uh, because where this is also, most of these are international. Uh, wow. Except Los Angeles and San Francisco are on You the mean list. the lowest inventory? Uh, least affordable international housing markets ranked by house price to annual income. Oh, wow. Yeah. So Hong Kong. That's probably the best way, one. by the way, to yeah. do it. Oh, definitely. Income to price. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, bad joke I was going to come up with there. Hong Kong. A dad joke. Sydney, Vancouver, Honolulu. Wow. That's oh, yeah, Hawaii. Is San Jose. Crazy. Yeah. Los Angeles, Auckland, which is Australia. New Zealand. New Zealand. San Francisco, Melbourne, Toronto. Wow. Yeah. So uh, the least affordable housing market is Hong Kong. The median house or apartment price is almost 19 times as high as the median annual gross household income. Wow. Hong yeah. Kong's always been expensive. Yeah. Well. Price per square foot is like wild, I heard. It was like on average. On average, it was like like 
four or five thousand a square foot, like something crazy. So I can definitely Prices see that. Prices either need to come down or incomes need to go up, one or the other. And Hong Kong's not getting any bigger, so you, you just have to either deal with it or because they can't build much more. You know, right. it's already pretty packed. So, yeah, that you know, it's funny too because affordability is probably going to be the main thing in the future. Right. You know, who can afford it, especially if they're not building any more housing. You know, there's not a lot of home builders going on. So talking about uh, that, I ha mine is titled, and this is from Fortune, which is things are getting really weird in the housing market. Ironically enough, when I was looking at the news, it was all over the place, the headlines, between commercial real estate, between residential real estate, between new development and everything else. And ironically enough, it was very, it, and I use this as the, um, the, the article because it says the 2023 housing market doesn't look like a national housing crash. It also doesn't look normal. So this is the perfect example of when there is a rush, like we saw the last three years to buy, that is not the time to buy. You know, now is the time to buy when there's uncertainty in the market. And, and this is the thing is, it's just been that way forever is that, you know, there, there's kind of like a, a, a swarm of bees to buy or a swarm of bees not to buy. And right now there's a lot of people that are, I don't know what to do, the rates, the pricing, um, is the seller realistic? Things like that. People are in this uncertainty. That's when you take advantage of the market. That's the way that I look at it. And the reason I brought this article up is because I probably passed 25 articles from all different sources that were talking roughly about the same thing. They're all over the place. So if I was a buyer, I would be, I would be hungry. Yes, obviously the rates are higher, but if you get a lower price, it kind of buffers it. And then you refinance and say two and a half, three years. I don't know. I'm just very bullish about buying right now. It's a great time to buy because no one else is. Yeah. Well, and if you look back, maybe even over the last 10 years or so, it's starting to look like the prices have normalized. Yeah. You know, hundred percent. It's, it has been like a crash off the high. Yeah. But it's really back to normal pricing levels. We so, went to an apartment yesterday selling at the same price. But then you can factor in what are the monthly costs uh, when the market rates are higher. Yeah. So, you know, is this going to go below where the normal housing price is? Possibly. But, you know, again, less competition. That's yeah. the time to buy. Yeah, the uncertainty and the amount of buyers. Yeah, and, and didn't you have an article where you mentioned something along the lines of how many people were underwater based on what they purchased in the last, like, two to three years? I don't know. There was some, like, drastic statistic where – the it was like 20 percent or 25 percent of the people that bought in the last two years or something are underwater well it's really only the the only risk there is the people who are losing their jobs yeah so yeah. if you bought a house in but they Seattle also put down 20 percent of the market yeah in 2021 and then you lost your job you know depends on how much you overpaid for the house because you probably have a low rate but now mm. you're not able to sell that house at the price you want, and you're going to have to like catch up on the monthly payments. Yeah. Uh, I like this article. The housing bubble. Owners trapped by low mortgage rates. Yep. Buyers thwarted by high mortgage rates. That's exactly what we were <laughs> just talking about. Right. But that, that, that first part is everything. Who's left to buy overvalued houses? Too few to prop up bubble valuations. Hmm. Uh, one I like here is, think about it. Why would I sell and surrender a 2.75, 3, or 3.25, 30-year mortgage only to move into another house with a loan at 5.5 or 6.5? I'm locked into my house and loan for years, mm -hmm. if not decades. Yeah. Uh, really interesting article. Lots of good viewpoints, but that is like a great example of how the market is yeah. right now. Yeah. Yeah, and and to be honest, I th we spoke about it two weeks ago. Is the one townhouse that we were that we went to in Brooklyn? They're moving to Connecticut, and they said, "I don't care about the interest rate because they're kind of doing this as a long term hold. This isn't a six year hold. This is a decade hold. Yeah, and they're willing to pay higher interest rates. But it is it's very interesting because." of what you said is that like why would i move if i'm locked in at like half of the interest rate that's what everybody's at yeah. where everyone's at right now that's why there's low inventory not yeah. a lot of sellers yeah yeah and, and and to double down on that is 
ironically enough, is that that's also why I, I see a lot of people, or at least home builders, are going into either conversions instead of new construction. And we'll be two interesting things that I'll bring up is what it's like in the commercial real estate realm, especially in San Francisco. Uh, these places oh, that yeah. were booming, New York City. It'll be really interesting over the coming months what happens because, uh, you know, f one of the comments on that bringing people back to the office is like how many losses are being written off that you can't write off in the future and no one's going to want to buy that big building that used to be filled with Google, Facebook, Instagram, and um, and now they're working from home because they, they don't want to go back to the office. So right. you're, you, you, they're like kind of handicapped. But that's interesting. So that's the weekly news wrap up. And we come back every Thursday live. Uh, right now we're not live. <laughs> we didn't want to go through, but it was a great week in real estate. If you guys have any questions, leave in the comments below. Shoot us a message on any stories you want us to react to. And it was good chatting. Talk to you guys next week.